Hey everyone, in my previous two videos regarding the National Football League and Eric Grubman's comments regarding Oakland's approval of a stadium framework for a plan, or really a stadium plan, and giving the Oakland City Pro Football Group, colloquially known as the Ronnie Lott Group, an exclusive negotiating agreement to build a stadium for the Raiders and Grubman's comments that the proposal should have went directly to the Oakland Raiders, that it went to a third party and that the Oakland Athletics president, as he, as Grubman said to me in an email, wasn't consultant or he wasn't, in fairness to Grubman, he didn't say that the ace president, Dave Caval, wasn't consulted. Mr. Grubman said that there was the unanswered question regarding the A's involvement. However, the term sheet does deal with that. So that's another point. I don't want to get off the track here. There is a more, far more sinister aspect to this entire situation that the media has not talked about or picked up on. And I have personal experience in. First of all, let me work forward to back. Some of you who followed this closely know that Oakland Raiders owner Mark Davis is entertaining a proposal and advancing, some would say, a proposal that would build an NFL stadium in Las Vegas somewhere, no one knows where yet, without the involvement of Las Vegas Sands CEO Sheldon Adelson, who really was the person responsible for getting the Raiders through Napoleon Callum and Andy Abu, the Las Vegas Sands government affairs representative, to Las Vegas and Nevada to begin the pre-development phase of stadium planning, which is what led to what happened at the Southern Nevada Tourism and Infrastructure Committee, which wrapped up its work in late September. And then, of course, we know about the Nevada legislature being strong-armed by the same Las Vegas Sands people, in the, quote, army of lobbyists that were hired, unquote, by Adelson's people to coerce or convince, if you like, a number of Nevada legislators who were on the fence to back and approve a $750 million 30-year subsidy that comes from an increase in the hotel tax. All of that happened because of Adelson. Now here Davis has a proposal, a plan, that excludes Adelson, the person responsible for bringing him to Vegas. And who is the architect of that proposal, the primary architect? A man by the name of Greg Carey. Who's Greg Carey? Greg Carey is a managing director with Goldman Sachs and has been involved in according to my last read about him this year, 28 NFL stadium financing deals. Excuse me, 28 stadium financing deals, most with the NFL. Let me give you an example of what he has been involved in. Or if it's not Mr. Carey, it's Goldman in general. But listen to this. In the case of the Carson NFL deal, it was Greg, excuse me, it was Tim Romer partnering with Greg Carey but then Greg Carey was also involved in stadium planning in San Diego. Greg Carey was also the architect of the stadium financing deal for the St. Louis Rams stadium that was never built because the Rams moved to Inglewood. Greg Carey has basically done so many NFL deals that it's arguably become his gravy train, or if you like, his specialty. Greg Carey, as I said to you, is now involved in Las Vegas. Guess who knows and has a great relationship with Greg Carey? NFL Senior Vice President Eric Grubman. Actually, Executive Vice President Eric Grubman. That's right. He does. Now, Eric has been quoted as saying that their relationship does not give Mr. Carey any additional business. He has to work, and Eric Grubman has said that 
Mr. Carey works really hard to obtain the business. They, they are very competitive. Okay. But in the Oakland situation, there is a very special problem. <clears throat> Oakland has barred Goldman Sachs from doing business with the city. And as I've said before, and I'll say again, and it must be repeated, this happened because of a deal that was advanced by Goldman aggressively in 1998 while I worked as economic advisor to Oakland Mayor Elihu Harris. I built a system dynamics model of their proposed deal, there being Goldman Sachs, a swap option, and concluded that the swap option would not save us money, it actually would cost us money. Elihu Harris and then Oakland District 2 Council member John Russo voted against the swap option. That swap option ended up costing Oakland at least $50 million. On top of that, Goldman has been barred from doing business in a number of cities around the country because they were selling these kinds of essentially payday loans writ large as huge bond issues to a number of cities that ostensibly needed them but wound up paying out more money when the sell was that, hey, we're going to save you money. Not true. Not true. It didn't happen. So the city of Oakland barred Goldman from business. And the episode led to the demise of then Oakland treasurer Jan Mazik, who was quite literally in Goldman Sachs' pocket. It was awful. I remember that like it happened yesterday and the feelings that I expressed in terms of Miss Mazik being essentially controlled by Goldman Sachs come back to me today. And I recount a number of conversations I had with the mayor on that. It was a not a great situation for us to be in at the time. This was before the results of the bond that the city council approved over our objection came through. So now, here we are. Here we are. With this scenario, folks, and I want you to pay attention. What would you do if you had, if you were in the NFL, and you were used to lurking with a person on this side in the form of Greg Carey who came up with a way to do a deal for a stadium in Las Vegas without Sheldon Adelson. Without Sheldon Adelson. Okay? And then on the other side you have Oakland using fortress investment bankers where the NFL doesn't have really a lot of experience with them at all. So which do you choose if you're the NFL? Oh, and then added this. Oakland has barred Goldman. So the NFL can't say to Oakland, oh, hey, why don't you work with Mr. Carey or Mr. Romer and come up with a stadium financing deal, okay? And then, okay, so if the NFL, if you're the NFL, what do you do here? Now, for me, I would say, hey, look, call Diane Paulway at Piper Jaffrey because she's every bit as good as Greg Carey at Goldman, and she's done a number of deals, and I contacted her last year, and they were ready to go on a deal for a privately financed, hybrid privately financed, industrial development bond finance stadium in Oakland. However, Oakland Mayor Libby Schaff never followed up and called because we were in an ENA situation. But then, during the MOU situation, she didn't turn around and call them then either. Just saying, okay? There was one alternative. But the bottom line is we have a Goldman in Vegas and Fortress in Oakland, and Oakland has barred Goldman. So wouldn't you think that somebody on the Vegas side would try to convince the NFL to muddle the waters, and maybe there would be some idea of muddling the waters? Or maybe it isn't so much muddling the waters, because Eric Grumman would hear this and say, God damn it, Zenny! Okay, I get you, Eric. But we've got to talk about this situation, man. It's sticking out there. 
because we have the very real fact that the city of Oakland has barred Goldman Sachs from doing business, and yet the NFL does business with Goldman. That's out there. That's there. You can't deny that. That's there. And so the NFL has to come out and say, hey, look, that's got nothing to do with anything. It's simply fortress itself. But if that's the case, why does the NFL recommend another investment bank, Piper Jaffrey, to work with Fortress, since now the NFA, NFA is structured the way that it is, but it can include other parties. We can change the deal. We can change the deal. Hell, we've done it before the past five years. Why not a little bitty adjustment, right? But this is clearly an issue, folks. And so if you're wondering why the NFL might, what the reason be would possibly be for why Grubman would suddenly give a muddled picture, I present to you the Goldman factor. And no, I'm not saying it's because he worked for Goldman, but I'm talking about the fact that Goldman is barred from doing business with the city of Oakland, and therefore the NFL feels that their best guy can't, the guy that they consider is the best, all right? Or may, it, it can't be involved in Oakland. Now, according to one publication, and I can attest to this, Goldman Sachs has a habit of trying to strong arm public money out of cities and municipalities. I had personal experience with that, this as well, and I'll tell you what that is. This goes back to an idea that I had for something called phasing. And what is phasing? Phasing to make a long story short, is a way of actually squeezing more redevelopment revenue out of a designated redevelopment project area than was allowed in normal structures. It took advantage of a giant loophole, a giant financing loophole in the law that I spotted and the existence of which was confirmed by three different legal counsel. Okay. I wanted the Goldman people to work with me and develop a kind of financing structure for the city based on that. And they did help me. But then we turned to the matter of stadiums and I wanted a privately financed deal. In fact, what I wanted to do was I wanted to develop a kind of a REIT structure, something that you could put on the stock market. I had it all worked out and it all technically worked. But it was too advanced for them. They just wanted to sell muni bonds. They just wanted to take our tax money. Okay? They didn't want to actually think and do anything innovative that would really advance financing. You understand what I'm saying? They didn't want to do that. So as innovative as Mr. Carey may be, he isn't that innovative. Not in the way that it saves tax dollars for us. That's a huge issue. So there, are, there you are, folks. I'm laying it out. That's part one of this. I'm going to hammer this until it breaks the rock. This has got, to, has got to be dealt with. Stay tuned.